Financial Risk Manager, FRM. Part 1 of the FRM exam covers the fundamental tools and techniques used in risk management and the theories that underlie their use. Standard Capital Asset Pricing Model. We have learned in the previous lectures about the portfolio return and volatilities and about investors' choices in holding efficient portfolios lying along the efficient frontier. In this lecture, we will learn about the market at equilibrium. That is, we will derive pricing models for asset under equilibrium conditions. In this lecture, standard capital asset pricing model is discussed, which will have a number of assumptions under ideal conditions. In the next lecture, we will see the effects of removing these assumptions. Agenda. In the first model, the markets will be assumed to be frictionless with various idealistic conditions. We will also plot the capital market line based under these assumptions. In the next lecture, we will derive a model under more practical scenarios. We will begin by explaining the assumptions underlying the standard model. We will then study about the risk and its measures using beta. Finally, we will learn about the security market line and how the price of asset changes with respect to the market. Market equilibrium. Let us first understand the concept of market equilibrium. At equilibrium market conditions, all investors are assumed to hold efficient portfolios lying along the efficient frontier and have common return and risk expectations. In such a case, when all investors hold the same risky portfolio, it must be market portfolio, in other words, at equilibrium. Investors hold the market portfolio. Various models have been developed to derive the price of the asset at equilibrium. The standard form of capital asset pricing model, CAPM, is based on the most idealistic conditions. Let us now see those underlying assumptions. Assumptions. The first assumption means that there is no transaction cost or any cost of purchasing or selling the security. The second assumption means that you can buy or sell any asset in fractions also. The third assumption means that there are no income taxes and hence there is no difference in income from dividends or capital gains or profit from increase in the price of security. The fourth assumption means that single investors cannot manipulate or affect the market by buying or selling in huge amounts. The fifth assumption means that the investors rely only on the return and volatility expectation in making an investment choice. The sixth assumption means that investors can short sell the asset in any amount. The seventh assumption implies that the investors can borrow and lend at the risk-free rate to any amount. The eighth assumption means that the expectations of investors are homogeneous or common. The last assumption implies that all assets are marketable, that is, they can be sold and purchased at any time and in any quantity. Capital Market Line In the previous lecture, we have plotted the efficient frontier as shown above. We know that any investor will invest only in the efficient portfolio lying on the efficient frontier. If the investor is allowed to borrow and lend at the risk-free rate, then any portfolio will lie on the blue straight line. This is also the case in practice, as usually a portfolio is a combination of risky and risk-free assets. Also, as all investors have some expectations, then the portfolio held by them at equilibrium must be the same, which will be the market portfolio, P, M. If the expected return of the market is R, M, and the standard deviation is omega, then the slope of this line is R, M minus R, F over omega. And the equation is given by the R equal RF plus slope, omega, where omega is the standard deviation of the efficient portfolio. This line is called the capital market line. The equation signifies that the return increases by the amount of slope on increasing the risk. That is standard deviation, omega by one unit. 
Hence, the slope of the equation is the sensitivity of the portfolio return with respect to the risk taken by the investor. Higher risk implies higher return along the capital market line. Now let us discuss the various types of risks and then we will introduce an important concept of beta of portfolio, which is the measure of risk with respect to the market. Measures of risk. You must have come across news of bankruptcy of some companies like Lehman Brothers. If the investor only invested in one such company, then his entire portfolio is at risk. Therefore, an investor usually diversifies his risk by investing in many securities so that the failure of one does not affect the overall portfolio. This kind of company-specific risk can thus be diversified away by holding many stocks, as shown in the figure. There is also another type of risk associated with the overall market such as the international recession affecting the world market. Such risk cannot be diversified away, and the investor has to bear this risk. Beta, measure of systematic risk. The systematic risk, or the market risk, is denoted by the parameter beta. It is the relative risk of the asset with the market, that is, the sensitivity of the asset with the market portfolio. A higher beta implies greater sensitivity, and hence a higher risk. Mathematically, beta is equal to the covariance of the asset, with the market divided by the variance of the market portfolio. To understand the implication of beta, let's take an example. Suppose an asset has a beta of 1.5. This means that it is one and a half times more sensitive to the market portfolio. If the market moves by, say, 20% upwards, then the asset moves by 1.5 times this amount, which is 30%. Similarly, if the market falls by 10%, then the asset will also fall by 15%. It means the asset is one and a half times more sensitive than the market movement. A beta of one signifies market beta, and the asset will move with the market. A beta of less than one will be less sensitive to the market movement. For example, if the market moves by 30% and the asset has a beta of 0.5, then it will rise by 15%. In some rare cases, you might come across negative beta. That is, the asset and market move in opposite direction.